Hi, Tom. I'm Gary Prati. I'm the customer's customer development representative for BRTV. I want to thank you for meeting me. Glad to see you, Jerry. Have a seat. I noticed this. Well, first of all, let's, let me ask you about this. Are you a uh, photographer, Bob? I kind of play around with it. I'm not very good. How long, have you, been, how long have you been doing it? Well, my life, probably, since I was a kid. Oh. And have you done anything professionally? Or just no. I'm just close like this. For fun. Well, uh, in that case, then, have you exhibited your work anywhere? No. I, I mean, these pieces right here are perfect, I would say. Those are not mine. Oh, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, whoever, uh, whoever gave you those. <laughs> oh, you're a collector? I collect some, yeah. How much does it cost? Okay. I mean, it must cost a lot to buy something of this quality. Well, that's kind of personal. I don't want to get into that. Uh, give me a range. Well, I mean, you can pay a couple hundred bucks all the way up to many thousands for top-notch photography. I would take it that this range is maybe in the higher range. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's in the middle range. Okay, great. That gives me an idea. So let's go back to your desk so that we can get started. Oh, this is a great picture here. Is this your family? Uh, yes. Uh, see, we have a son. How old is he? He's 32. 32. And what does he do? Uh, he's been in the development uh, and construction industry in sales. Uh, but right now that is kind of going through tough times. So he's just doing odd jobs until uh, that industry starts to come back. Oh, great. And your wife is beautiful. How long have you been married? Well, we're divorced, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess, well, it looked to me like you guys were made for each other. Yeah, so you must, we thought we were. <laughs> you must really have uh, a very good relationship where you keep a Yeah, we're friend. still good friends. Yeah, we, okay, great. we maintain the friendship. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Shaving was the <being> order. <laughs> So, how long, how long have you been uh, in, in, in the nonprofit business? I've been probably since the mid-90s. I started out in banking and real estate and uh, those kind of related financial type businesses, and then I moved into the nonprofit world in the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. And um, when you say in the nonprofit world, I would take it that you were in any I've been... Uh, I've been involved in helping nonprofits uh, establish themselves and strengthen and sustain themselves uh, since the mid 90s. Started out in a local community improvement program called the Main Street Program and helped organize a, a nonprofit to employ those uh, processes in a neighborhood in, in my former hometown. Yeah, I've seen you, you in the papers quite a bit here in the yeah. Don't don't believe everything you're in the papers, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Seems though that you're doing a bang up job. I applaud you on your efforts. Thank you. I'm very passionate about downtown Glenwood. I like the uh, uh, the community as a whole, and I know the downtown is an important part of it. So we formed the downtown partnership about a year and a half mm -hmm. ago. To, uh, it's a community organization to focus on the downtown. And that's one thing that uh, I kind of want to talk with you about later. Okay. Uh, but tell me about your banking industry. Work. Sure. Started, I graduated with a finance degree and uh, went into the banking business and uh, kind of moved through operations into commercial and real estate development lending mm -hmm. and uh, enjoyed that at the time. I think it became over-regulated to the point where we couldn't really serve the customers as effectively as I would have liked. And so I had an opportunity to move into some related uh, type of work and, and did that at that time. But uh, the banking business was a good learning opportunity because back then commercial lending was all about understanding the customer and serving the customer and getting to know the business of the customer. and. I think that probably without knowing it is when I really started to develop a passion for small businesses and communities. Well, I've been learning a little about the banking industry. It sounds like an exciting field. I'm thinking about going into it myself after I finish high school. Keep your day job. Why is that? <laughs> um, the banking business today is a mess. That's what makes it so exciting. It, well, it's exciting, <laughs> yeah. So it's jumping off a cliff without a parachute. <laughs> I guess you have a point there. Yeah. <laughs> Right now, the uh, 
banking and, and real estate industries are probably two of the toughest on the planet to be in, and certainly in this economy, in this country. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, I've read that several of our largest, largest corporations here in the uh, U.S. started during recessions. Have you heard those statistics? Oh, sure. Yeah. It's a lot of people, you know, you look at a recession as being a, a time when nothing good happens, but a lot of good does come out of recessions. That's the old silver lining thing. And, you know, the, take the downtown. There's been I mean, concerns expressed about the number of vacancies downtown. Mm -hmm. But every one of those vacancies represents an opportunity for an exciting new retail or related business to come into town. And some of those have already started to, to show up. So, Well, that's my thought process when it relates to banking. But yeah. you're, you're saying I ought to think about it a bit more? Think about it a bit more, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would. Um, it's a, It's a... I think it's a business that's going through a lot of transition right now, and it's probably uh, uh, there, there are probably too many unknowns that, that you probably want to see settled before you got too committed to that. Well, if I'm just learning about the banking industry, I would assume that in a year or two everything will be more settled because the, you know the typical recession lasts 11 months. So how long have we been in ours? Well, we're out of ours technically. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what they tell us. Technically, we're out of ours, but. Uh, but the banks are still struggling to find their way and to, uh, I think that, you know, the biggest issue I see with banking industry right now is the unknown regulatory environment yet to be determined. That's right. And even though the recession may be technically over now and, and actually may, we may start to come back and strengthen, uh, bankers are, are, are not inclined to want to do a whole lot or take a whole lot of chances until they get a, a, a more solid sense of what the regulatory environment is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Right now, they could violate a law that hadn't even been written. That's right. Yeah, so. That's right. Um, I notice your desk is quite unusual. Did you make oh, it okay. yourself? Uh, no, a colleague of mine did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and I, he I'm must gonna, be an artist. I'm going to have a talk with him about it. He also has curious impressions of what my family looks like, but we'll get to that at another time. <laughs> It, it is a unique desk. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I guess you have to keep it clean because if you get too many papers on it, it will fall over. Well, the good news is I can't load up either side of it too heavily. So I have to be centered with everything I do. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Great. <laughs> I understand. So um, the, when you schedule the appointment, you said you had some opportunities you wanted to talk to me about. Now, it usually means somebody's looking for money, but uh, why don't you tell me? What you have in mind? Well, I, I, I have a, a proposition for you that is going to help both your company and the company that I'm representing. I told you that I was with Be Heard TV. Let me tell you a bit about it. Great. Be Heard TV is a show that is broadcast weekly over the internet by teens, completely produced by teens for young people. Okay. However, even though our message is focused on young people, it crosses generational boundaries. Uh, a lot of adults watch our show as well. Uh, Be Her TV started several years ago presenting special programs such as interviews with groups of kids in malls and different other settings on issues that kids are uh, uniquely interested in. Texting. <laughs> <laughs> well, for example, social issues such as getting along with parents, drug uh, and alcohol use, etc. those types of things. Over the years, it's grown into a weekly show so that last year, we started our concerted effort to produce regular weekly shows on Tuesday evenings, and our audience has been growing every week around the world, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is Be Heard, and what I want to tell you today is that I have an opportunity for you to um, enhance your branding and cooperate with this unique uh, young person or team-centered activity that we're producing. But before I get into that, I'd like to know particularly what is your experience uh, as the head of ICA in uh, branding, in advertising, in marketing, and those related fields? You know, um, it's a topic of interest to me, and I find myself gravitating to, you know, information resources about it, like when I go to conferences that are related <laughs> to the field I work in, uh, 
if I see something on, say, new marketing techniques, certainly on the social media today and social media marketing and that sort of thing, I tend to gravitate to those to, and why is to that? learn about. Well, because the uh, um, I've got enough of an understanding. I'm not a marketing person. I, I have a colleague who's actually is quite good in that arena, and, and I lean on him quite a bit for that. But uh, uh, I and I've learned in part from my colleague and others that the image that you project is sort of the, the first impression people have of you determines whether people are even going to be interested in a message if you want to communicate a message, like you know volunteer opportunities in our nonprofit world or we're going to be doing a fun drive or we're doing a special event or uh, here's an activity that we want to get some support on and that sort of thing. Well, we want that message to get out into the community. They've got to know, A, that we exist, and B, they have, have to have some sense that we're of interest to them. And so I get the kind of the idea that that's where the branding comes into play. Kind of the idea, I must, I must compliment you because you probably have a more sophisticated view of branding and marketing than I've seen among most independent business people. I bet so you I, say that to all I, of your sponsors and patsies. Thank you. <laughs> I told you I've been trying to pay attention. So, you know, this. so have you done any type of marketing? Well, we're really, uh, and right now I'm, I'm really focused with, ICA works with other nonprofits, as you know, and we help nonprofits uh, kind of develop their own strengths and sustain them and such. So I'm working with two right now. One is the Downtown Partnership and one is a statewide organization. Uh, and they're both in their earliest stages and they're both, they both need branding. So I'm really looking at branding opportunities for our, for our nonprofit clients right now. That's great because I have an opportunity for you uh, to invest in that would help you get that branding across with an audience that is not only focused on the Roaring Fork Valley, but on Western Colorado itself. So we can actually get partners for you with the concept that I, I want to present to you. Um, interested in partners. Great. Our audience spans the generations. As I said, our goal is to view the, uh, to, to, to grow the viewing audience to in the millions. I know you're not focused on the millions right now, but just to give you an overview of what Be Heard TV is trying to do. Do you have that kind of an audience now? or We have a worldwide audience. We can track our viewers every week on the Internet. And we have viewers in, well, we, I think we had one in Canaan last year, um, Tokyo. I'm not quite sure how to get. Is your the primary viewing area, what is your primary viewer area or your trade our, area or whatever? Our primary uh, trade area is right now the Lower and Fort Valley. Of okay. course, we're growing out in concentric circles. We hope to focus more on Western Colorado this year. Okay. Well, you know, that that's a bit, that was particularly of interest to me because ICA does, is, is moving into this arena of serving other nonprofits, fledgling nonprofits and startups with specialized services. So mm -hmm. if we can get our brand associated with that type of service, and get the attention of people who are involved with nonprofits or maybe they sit on a board or they've been talking about starting something or they, they see somebody that needs help who would like them to think about ICA. Great. Uh, that is perfect because we, we need other entities within the Valley, first of all, that understand our vision and complement our vision. And you, from my research, ICA does just that. I know you're in business development. Right. We're teaching kids the business of TV production action. Okay. Uh, I know that you're in economic development, and that goes hand in hand with business development. Also, I've seen on your website that you're very interested in developing teenagers as entrepreneurs. Is that true? We, 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 let me say it this way. That's essentially true. We're, we're very passionate about entrepreneurism. Um, we're very cognizant of the strength of entrepreneurism to the U.S. economy and to local economies. 